I made a recent video, a different one, where I showed how to make a open wound, air wound coil similar to the old air ducts coils um, using a tapered form that I 3D printed. Uh, this end is larger than this end by a little bit. There are slots, four slots around here. And I modeled this form in a free and easy to use program called OpenSCAD. Uh, open and then SCAD. Uh, it's a parametric program uh, where you define an object by statements uh, and numerical values. Uh, it's great for geometric type shapes. Um, <clears throat> and I also uh, modeled these strips that go into these slots, slide back and forth. And these strips have slots in them for the wires, for the uh, wire, the windings uh, to make the coil. This is a coil that I made using that technique. It is got a little bit of a taper to it. Um, and I used super glue to uh, hold the windings in place on the strips. Um, and when I did that, I was in a hurry and just ran water over the uh, super glue. Uh, super glue is one of the materials that cures hydraulically. It sucks moisture out of the air to cure. And I just wanted to speed that up, but it made it kind of bubble up and look a little trashy. But um, coil certainly is decent and functional. But <clears throat> aesthetically, I didn't really like the idea that um, that coil is tapered. Electrically, it's not a problem because you're going to have more variables than everything else associated with the coil. Um, but I just wanted to see if I could come up with a scheme that uh, resulted in a uniform diameter coil. So we'll set this aside and that form. And this was the idea I came up with. It has a tapered core and then four of these other pieces fit around it. And they have a groove uh, in this piece and then a triangular uh, section here to hold this and the idea is that four of these go around the central core and I'm going to hold them together with a rubber band temporarily here And then if you can see the end of this here, um, these same strips will go into these slots. These larger slots are simply, are simply there for spacing so that once you pull all this thing apart, everything just collapses into the middle and you can pull everything out of the, um, out of the coil. Um, I'm going to insert here a video taken from the modeling program itself, which will be a little clearer because since this material is black, probably hard to uh, distinguish what's what. Uh, and that hopefully that video will show this a little, a little more detail, a little more clear.
and then we need to put these strips into the slots. Um, that lets you set the number of turns that you want to use. Now that'll be uh, determined by these strips. It'll let you set the turns per inch you want. And <clears throat> once you set the turns per inch, that will adjust the angle of these slots so that the wire, as it wraps around, hits the, uh, hits the next <clears throat> slot properly. There's probably a less clumsy way to do this, but I haven't come up with it yet. Um, and this really wasn't intended to be a production scheme anyway. I don't think anybody's going to use this to go into large-scale manufacturing, <clears throat> but for making a quick and dirty coil uh, that looks decent, I think this will work. So the material I chose to 3D print with is called PETG. It's similar to material that is used for milk bottles. Um, except that this is black pigmented, which is going to be uh, quite UV resistant. And the material itself is quite weather resistant from moisture and things like that. So this would be suitable for making a coil uh, for a ham radio antenna or something like that. Um, you might possibly use this to make a coil for uh, an amplifier, more likely something like a um, uh, antenna matching unit, um, either out at the antenna or a, an adjustable one in the ham shack. Um, the grooves in these strips um, are uh, these slots, these slots in the strips are um, circular at the bottom to hold the wire and when you do the model, when you work up the design, you specify the wire gauge you want to use. That will set the channel width and the uh, diameter of the hole at the bottom, or the rectangular sl or cylindrical slot at the bottom. Um, but I put a little bit of uh, extra material in the design so that the wire, when it goes in, should actually kind of snap into place. Uh, you probably can hear that click in. Um, and that's also actually a variable in the in the model design. So we're going to take a piece of 14 gauge wire here and start winding. I'll put a bend in it. Uh, since the strips slide, oops, that one twisted a little, they will adjust in the form so that at the next, at the time you complete a full turn, uh, this one doesn't want to stay in there real well. Time you complete a full turn, Uh, it's ready for the next slot. So we'll wrap this around. And once we get a few turns on here, we can remove the rubber band.
I'm doing this fairly quickly. Uh, if I took my time a little bit more, I could probably get the turns a little more uniform. But they're not bad as it is. Now this particular set of strips is set up for 12 turns, 6 turns per inch, and the interior form here, um, I just picked the length to match the number of turns and turns per inch I chose, and then the diameter was set at, uh, I think I set it at 50 millimeter. Okay, we're at the end. We'll put another bend in that. And trim it a little bit. So there we have the basics of the coil. And then we'll take some super glue. Just go down and put a little dab. We don't want to put too much. If we put too much, they might glue the strip to the core or to the form. Okay, I went ahead and did the uh, put the super glue on the rest of the strips, and uh, let it cure by itself this time. And this is the narrow end. This is the larger end. So we're going to pop this out this way. I hope the super glue is actually set. And as I pull this out. The other sections come out with it. And we're left with a reasonably looking core coil. Now this <clears throat> this is repeatable. Um, let's set this aside here. This is a coil I did previously. Same turns per inch, same number of turns, same diameter. And you can see that the two coils are pretty similar. I also had, uh, previously done a coil with six turns at three turns per inch. Um, strips are different, of course. Um, fewer slots and a different angle, different pitch angle. But uh, it does work. And you can use the same set of forms. You just uh, model up some different strips and that's easy to do in the application uh, open SCAD. Now I did do one uh, where I tried using uh, 10 gauge wire and made some strips for that larger uh, slots of course. Um, didn't work out so well. Um, as it came apart the the uh, strong wire made the strips go a little bit of kilter. Um, I mean, it's functional, 
but I'm not sure I would bother if I was trying to make a coil like this. I'm pretty sure that you could just wind these heavier gauges around a form. They'll spring out by themselves and um, pretty much hold their shape by themselves. I don't think you even need, you know, strips or anything for that. Uh, so it was an interesting experiment, but I don't recommend it. So, uh, hope you enjoy the video. If you get any use out of the uh, files, let me know. The files uh, will be uploaded to a uh, website called Printables. Uh, it has lots of 3D printing uh, files available free. Um, and uh, these will be the same. This uh, I'll make this file publicly available. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any comments, uh, leave it in the section below. Thank you very much.